Hey you guys, welcome to Under the Air Sports. I'm Eric Hobbs. And I'm David Woldingen. And it is time to preview Mizzou against Vanderbilt. Season continues, Mizzou looking to get to 4-0. Before we get into that, please guys, find us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a comment about what you think is going to happen in this game. Then find us on Facebook, Instagram, X, and on Spotify. All right, David. Mizzou 3-0 after beating Boston College and... This Vandy team, stylistically at least, kind of similar to Boston College. Yeah, they got a uh, running passing type quarterback, although he's a better passer, with uh, Diego Pavia. Or, yeah. And yep. he he's a game changer if he's on and does what he needs to do. He showed that when he was at New Mexico State, and now he's with Vanderbilt. He pretty much won the game for them against Virginia Tech. Uh, and and I will just say, while the styles are similar, I'd say talent-wise, BC had more talent, especially on the offensive line. Yep. So I expect to see a lot more pressure this time around with Mizzou just because I think they'll out-talent Vandy. Yeah, I agree. You, you know, Diego Pavia is similar on the surface. I think he is what 5'10, 200 pounds, and he is mobile. He's maybe not as fast as Thomas Castellanos, the BC quarterback, but he is fast. Drink Drinkwitz on Tuesday called him sneaky fast and said he was a fullback playing quarterback, basically. And you know, I, he's not as fast, but he's that fullback comment drink what's made he's more physical as a runner and with with hill the way he runs i don't think the mizzou d line will be i, I don't think they're going to be really as stuck and just maintain their gaps and their lanes as much they may do it to to an extent but I I don't, I don't think, think he's, he's as, as shifty. fast getting to the outside as Castellanos. Yeah, I don't think he's as shifty. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a hard straight line runner, and uh, when you got a running quarterback who's a hard straight line runner, it's a lot easier to head him off with your linebackers, and it allows your D line to get up field more. Uh, you're still going to want to play contain with the DNs and Absolutely. don't let them get don't let them get outside, but at the same time. You're not just going to build a fence around him now. You're actually going to try to get to him, in my opinion. Plus, he's a better passer than what we saw out of Boston College. So yep. uh, they're going to have to be able to get more pressure on him. They can't just let him stand back there and uh, go against his own defense, kind of like Boston College did. Yeah, you know, he he's capable. Yeah, you mentioned the uh... – the, the the Virginia Tech game he played, where he almost single-handedly won that game for Vandy. He also, a year ago, was at New Mexico State. He was their quarterback when they went down and dismantled Auburn. You may remember that game. He's the reason for that, okay? So that's the caliber of player you're talking about. And, you know, again, comparing to Boston College, stylistically – you look at the number of pass attempts versus run attempts. It's almost two to one running. So this is a running team led by Pavia. Pavia, 54 carries on the season for 195 yards. That's the most carries and the most yards on the team. He is complemented in the running game by Cedric Alexander, who really is the feature running back. Um, you also have A.J. Newberry, that's really it. He's got 10 carries on the season. That's really, I think, all you can expect, aside from maybe a random spot carry here or there, is those two running backs, Alexander and Newberry, along with Pavia. And that's what we're going to hear a lot on Saturday is those three names, David. And it's all about this Mizzou defense, top 20 run defense right now, giving up 73 point some odd yards per game. It's all about them trying to shut down that run game. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I do think where this game gets kind of interesting is they did show some cracks in their coverage, especially uh, with that zone coverage. Because, I mean, let's face it, Mizzou hasn't 
in years past played much zone. No. So they had two blown coverages. One was because a ball was loose on the ground, happened to pop right back into uh, Castellanos' hand, and he just dropped it over everybody because everyone was yeah. rushing forward. But then at the end of the game, Burks, I I don't know what he was doing. I was, I'm assuming he was trying to go for like a big hit or something and just – vacated the area which allowed a wide open space that Boston College just picked apart so I have questions about Mizzou's secondary against a passing quarterback so it's yeah. going to be very interesting to see how they handle this are they going to again try play zone or are they going to try bring a little more pressure this time around to get him off his throwing game as well yeah corner isn't as big of a concern for me as safety uh Char- joseph charleston okay to me marvin burks is the bigger concern and it's youthful mistakes is what it is you know uh he has that reputation as a hut a head hunter looking to just find the ball carrier and blow him up uh, he wants to do that he did it in high school all the time he needs to understand what his role is on this team and that's something where he may be tested because you, you need to be able to help up and run support. Yes. But David, it, in a lot, in a lot of basic kind of sets, who's a safety going to cover the tight end, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the leading receiver for Vandy is Eli Stowers, the tight end. And, you know, he's he's not a big rumbling kind of tight end. He's 6'4, 225. So almost like a gosh, the example that comes to mind is like a Marcus Lucas going back 10 years. Uh that tight size of a receiver. He's got 12 catches, 163 yards, and uh, and he's got one tutty. So that's probably the biggest threat in the passing game. Uh leading Pure wide receiver, Quincy Skinner Jr. Uh, eight catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown of his own. You know, it's one of those where I think Missouri, especially D tackles, is making a mess of the line of scrimmage. I, I think Vandy's going to have to get creative. And they've shown they're capable of it with, with the passing game. You know, you look at the Georgia state game where Vandy lost and the passing game really carried them, led them on that comeback. Now they were passing a lot because they were losing most of the game. Yes, but they were effective and they took the lead late before blowing it. Now, David, let's talk about Missouri on offense. You know, finally got Luther burden touchdown Luther version against Boston College, 117 yards, touchdown. And it it you know, it's it's Luther Burden being Luther Burden and that was missing in the first two games and that's going to be a, a tall order for Vandy to slow him down. Well, and my biggest concern there is it still took Mizzou a good quarter and a half to get him that football. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot we could talk about on office quite honestly that needs to be fixed. I do know, I think these practices this week are not going to be fun, especially no. after that undisciplined third quarter drive that netted them a second and 59. Second um, 50. <laughs> yeah. You have to look at your screen twice. Like, is that really true? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I got a feeling they're going to have their act together. Um, uh, one thing worth mentioning is uh, Vanderbilt's safety is going to be out in the first half due to a targeting call. C.J. So, Taylor, perhaps yeah. their best – one of maybe their best defensive player. So, especially last week, Mizzou only tried throwing deep twice in the game. I could see them test that safety with uh, Marquis Speedy Johnson – over the top, yeah. or or even throw a Weiss or Burden out there for a couple deep balls in the first half. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they attack with possibly a bat. Well, well, with a backup in the first half of that game, uh, try to take advantage of that weakness. Yeah, and, and well, and depending on if it's a safety or a linebacker in coverage, 
potentially Brett Norfleet as well, the tight end, getting him some looks, getting him lost in like some crossing route right at line of scrimmage, something of that nature. He could break loose against what? a backup type safety. And that will be one where we will see a lot of motion before yeah. the snap. I think just to get their matchups and get get uh, Vanderbilt off their game plan, if you will, so they can get the matchup they want. So it's going to be very interesting to see how we approach this game. I do think uh, they showed in the Boston College game, the run game is there like it was yes. last year. The line did a fantastic job blocking, open up run lanes. I think they need to, again, lean on that, get rhythm going in the offense, and then you play off the run game. Uh, you can still have a very balanced offense, but by leaning on that run game early, getting those first downs, getting the offense into a rhythm, that's when you can open up your playbook with the passing and hit play actions, rollouts, things like that. Um, Cook had a very solid game passing. Uh, he still had a few throws that were off and behind. He, he had that one deep ball uh, that was overthrown. And then he had a very nice ball right to Weiss early in the game. Yeah. If it wasn't for that arm being held back, I think he would have caught that. Um, that was where that questionable no call came in. But yeah, You know, I, at the end of the day, David, you, you can talk about Brady Cook and some throws not being perfect. Right. The dude is completing over 70% of his passes to date this season. Well, and that's where I was going to go with it. He's he's doing yeah. what we know he can do. He's a manager, game manager, and he's not turning the ball over. And Mizzou's shown in the Boston College game how big that is with their two picks because that changed yep. the whole me- momentum of the game. And I think that's how this game's going to go too, honestly. Yeah, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head with the running game. I think through three games, it's it's becoming clear that uh, the offensive line for Mizzou is solid in pass protection. They are dominant in run blocking. And that same stretch zone play s- seems to be, especially to the left side, <laughs> just wrecks people. Doesn't matter who it is. Going back to 2023 with Cody Schrader, when it was Javon Foster and Xavier Delgado leading the way, now with Nate Noel going out there with Marcus Bright and Caden Green leading the way, it's the same thing, which is super impressive that it's entirely different personnel in probably the three most important spots in that play. And Austin College, they were giving up seven, eight yards at least per per play on the, that I, stretch zone. I wanted I believe, them to run it more. I believe like three the first three or four times Mizzou ran it, they got at least 10 yards and it started yeah. tr- trickling back a little to like eight. But like it, it was unstoppable, especially in the first half. Oh, yeah. And that that is something where if I were talking to the coaching staff, I'd tell Kirby Moore, yes, it's boring, but they can't stop it. Who cares? That's really the only complaint I've had with play calling for the most part all year is, and that's something every coach wants to get creative and show stuff, which, all right, if you're trying to put stuff on film, all right, I get that. The game was close enough. I I don't think they should have been doing that. But, you know, at the end of the day, they won, and this running game is dominant. And, yeah, Missouri, I think, is going to be a running team, which can really put other teams in a in a bind if Missouri can with their defense and the way they're running turn into a ball control kind of team with the talent they have that's lethal well and I do want to mention one thing about the defense that struck me against Boston College and I don't know if it was noticeable on TV Eric but Mm -hmm. at the game it was very noticeable that every two or three plays, they're they're rotating the defensive line. Yeah. So they had fresh guys out there every couple of plays, and it wore on Boston College. You could see by the second half that, like, the line had to block against, like, very fresh Mizzou D linemen every time around, and they couldn't do anything. Like, Mizzou dominated the line of scrimmage because of the fact that they have – 
two deep, maybe even three deep on the line that they're able to rotate in and out and keep guys fresh. It was very impressive to see them pull that off. Yeah, you, you have to give a shout out. You knew Christian Williams was was good. He was kind of the number one going into camp. Chris McClellan has, maybe, since since the first game, may, he may be the best defensive lineman on the team. And then Marquise Gracial has really emerged, and he's becoming more of a factor, which, you know, as you, as you just said, more depth means fresher legs, means dominance on the interior of the defensive line. And they're part of, that's part of the reason, a big part of the reason that they gave up 49 rushing yards to a Boston college team that had run all over the place against their prior opponents. I, you know, it's frustrating looking at that Boston college game, David, because if they, not even other mistakes, but just penalties and discipline type things, if they clean that up, they win that game by two, three touchdowns. Well, and they had two drives in the first half that led to field goals that stalled out where, again, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of play calling, a little bit of just they were off. I don't know how else to describe it. But uh, if they would have finished those two, I think they would have just ran away with this game, quite honestly. Uh but look, look at how Boston College got their 21 points. The first touchdown drive, if not, uh, McClellan had a hands to the face when Boston College was about at their own 40-yard line or wherever it was, short of midfield. And that would have been fourth down. Yeah. It was an ob- obvious call. If you never saw the replay, if you were at the game or whatever, it was an obvious call, dumb penalty. And it didn't affect the play. It didn't need to happen. That, sh- that should have never happened. That drive should have stalled out. There's one touchdown. The second touchdown, it was a fluke. I will grant you that. It's a fluke. That said, Marvin Burks should know better than to try to run and recover a fumble in the backfield when he's (laughs) in the defensive backfield. You know, that's one where experience will teach him, and he'll never make that mistake again because he was the reason that Boston College – had a guy wide open Two guys, and then the third actually. touchdown again Burks just falling asleep in coverage guy ran right by him 40 yards wide open for a touchdown so mental lapses in one form or another are the only reason Boston College scored a point all right and that, that's that's how close Missouri is to being an absolutely dominant team let's be honest that They've played, I don't know, that Murray State was whatever. They played about an A minus B plus game while starters were were out there. Against Buffalo, grind out about a B, B plus kind of game. Boston College was the, was worse. A C, C minus kind of game, I thought. And then if they ever get that A game going, look out. Well, and this is that team. This is all wow. They've only had two or three plays longer than 20 yards. Yeah. Let that sink in. That's how efficient this offense has been. They're they're eating clock, they're taking up time. They had a drive in the in the fourth quarter that took up almost eight minutes, I want to say it was seven or eight minutes. And they ended up with a field goal, and that was right before they gave up that touchdown in the fourth with that mental lapse, but it was an impressive drive because they just kept chewing clock and Boston college yes. couldn't do anything about it. And yeah, it's not flashy, but they're, they're moving the chains constantly. Yeah. They're, they're this close to being absolutely dominant against almost anybody. Really. If you want my personal opinion on it. David, let's get into predictions now. You know, last week picked up what, frankly, felt like an easy win. Uh, Mizzou favored by 16 and a half, 17 points. And we both said 10 points, basically. And, you know, six-point game, 
So a win for us that felt pretty easy because that's that line was too big. Mizzou favored by 21 in this one. And I think a, after a week of Drinkwitz reminding this team about how terribly they played parts of this game. And I think I think after a week of getting ripped a new one, I think they're gonna be out to prove a point. Not to really anybody except the coaching staff. I got Mizzou winning. No drama there. I got him covering. I got 38 to 10. I think it would be bigger, except for the fact that both teams are going to run the ball a lot, run the ball a lot, and it's going to be kind of a shortened game. Otherwise, I'd have Mizzou bigger. 38-10. And I have Mizzou covering and winning as well. Uh first SEC game of the season. I yeah. think th they're going to be jacked for that. They're going to want redemption for how offensively they're going to want redemption for how poorly uh, they played in a sense of all the mistakes and stupid errors and penalties. Uh, defensively, I'm hit or miss with our secondary still because I still don't think we've been really tested in that area. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if, uh, Pavia gets going, passing the ball. How Mizzou handles that if they get pressure on him? Uh, will the coverage just hold up? Are they going to play zone again? That's the first time I've seen Mizzou play true zone in a long time. Uh, so I have them giving up 17 points to Vanderbilt, just in the sense of I don't know where our secondary is yet. In the, and who knows, they might surprise me, and I hope they do. But at the same time, I think the offense is going to get it going and they're going to score 42. So I have Mizzou 42 to 17 over Vanderbilt. I got a bonus, bonus prediction for you. Missouri's given up 73 yards rushing per game. That number is going to get smaller. Vanderbilt is not going to be able to run the ball at all against Missouri. I think they're going to be forced to pass. And they'll get a couple of chunk plays because they're throwing every single play. But, yeah, Vandy won't be able to run at all, I don't think. Yeah, so stay tuned. I hope everybody enjoys the game, and we'll have our reactions after the game for everybody. So, as always, thank you for watching Under the Arch Sports.